Hey drummers, how's it going? It's Alex once again, bringing you some more fun free drumming ideas. For this week's lesson, we've got a rather tricky eight measure exercise to help promote a little bit of independence. Um, you know, where we're gonna play some patterns between our kick and our left hand, while we first of all keep a nice steady eighth note pattern up on the hi-hat. Um, we're gonna sort of split it up into these four little chunks. The first chunk is gonna be two bars of parallels, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, snare, over and over again until we do two bars worth. Then we'll do the same with inverted parallels. We're gonna include the dynamics so we're not just slogging the snare drum all the way through. We get some nice ghosties in there. Um, for the second half, we're gonna sort of start looking at these little patterns of three. So we're gonna go with kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare. We're gonna let that spill over the bar line and then by the time we get to beat four, we're gonna round it all off. We then do the same thing but with snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick. We'll keep that one loud and proud again spill over the bar line, get to beat four, round it off with the paddle sticking to bring us back round to the beginning, and then go round again. Once we've got it with the eighth notes, um, I'm not gonna lie, I've sort of slightly stolen this off of one of my favorite drum teachers on YouTube, that's uh, Mr. Mike Johnson. We're then gonna apply that that sort of like jazz pattern, but we're gonna keep it quite straight. Again, this is just gonna you know, create a whole new host of problems, trying to coordinate that pattern, again, with the little sequences going on between the kick and the snare just a kick and snare. So um, I'm not as good as him, so I won't be able to play it quite as well, but I'm gonna give it a bloody good go. So if you like what you saw in the intro and you wanna give this one a crack, stick around and I'll break it down. Plagiarism style. I'll cut that bit out. All right, so let's um, break this down. This might be quite a long video. So just so we get this out of the way, right hand doesn't do anything other than go one and two and three and four and, all right, for now anyway. Now underneath we're playing 16th notes, so for every hi-hat I play, there's gonna be two notes popping out of either the bass drum, the snare drum, it could be bass bass, snare snare, it could be bass snare or snare bass. All right, so keep that in mind. If you ever need to sort of slow things down, just go for it hi-hat at a time or each hit on the hi-hat at a time. Work out which one lands with the hi-hat and then as you're bringing your hand up and you reach the tip of that arc, work out which note is gonna slip on that, you know, whether it's a snare, a bass, whether it's a ghosted snare or something like that. Now, the first pattern is a paradiddle, and I've done some videos on this in the past, and all we're playing, just think of your right foot as your right hand, and think right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. When I get to the left hand side of the paradiddle, I'm gonna crack that snare, but all the other notes are gonna be ghosted with the left hand. So we get this kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, kick, 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 snare, kick, snare, snare. If I take away the right hand, probably just tying this up a little bit. There we go. All right, so you notice, <coughs> I'll get all the dynamic stuff out of the way now. Um, every time I'm doing a ghost note, just sort of pointing the stick down a tiny bit, dropping, using my fingers to sort of collect the stick, uh, but gravity does a lot of the work there. When I get to those back beats that I want to crack, whip of the wrist, whoppa. Just remember, it's a bit like, just imagine you're holding a spoon and you've got a stubborn bit of mashed potato on there and you just want to flick it off. And that's kind of the motion you're going for. That you can sort of feel the ripple come down your arm. Okay, and that'll give you that nice sort of snap sound. If you catch the rim, even better. All right, so measures one and two, it's just this all the way through. One, e, and a, two, e, and a, three, e, and a, four, e, and a, one, e, and a, two, e, and a, three, e, and a, four. All right, so once you've nailed measures one and two, paradiddles, we then move on to inverted paradiddles. Again, Right foot is your right hand, and we're going to get this right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. And I'm putting a bit more emphasis on that left because that's the one you're going to crack. So nice and slow. All right, um, I'll take away the right hand. Okay, and again, just two measures of that. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. What was that? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, this sounds great. If you are with me on my website, I suggest you sign up because for a fiver, you've now got access to about an extra 100 videos or 100 lessons, hours of content, because um, at the moment I'm putting one up on here on YouTube for free for everyone, and then every other week one goes to the website, and uh, we've got some, some juicy content on there at the moment, so go and check it out. Last week we looked at the inverted paradiddle, but we were playing it. Okay, it's the same thing, this is like a little development of that, but we're just gonna play the right hand just following eight notes. 
This one does sound really cool. I'm going to turn this down. You don't hear it enough anymore. All right. Sounds great. It's a really nice little pattern to play. Um, it works really well as a groove. Once you've got the paddles down, then just start hammering away at this one. Okay. So essentially, we've got the easy ones out of the way because we kind of know those quite well. And they sort of, you know, that's... It's a four note pattern. Now we're gonna start moving into these little three note patterns. Um, so bars five and six are predominantly gonna be made up of. Okay, this little kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare. Uh, if you wanted to for this one, you can just keep all the left hand notes ghosted. You get this quite nice. All right, one thing you'll find is the bass drum's gonna land with the hi-hat, then without, with the hi-hat, then without, with the hi-hat, then without. Now, by the time you've sort of, you wanna just keep going all the way through measure one, so we've got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now, the upper B4 is gonna be a kick. What I would suggest, if you wanna just checkpoint the midway point, uh, checkpoint like start of measure two, I tend to just crack. So we do that little echo of the snare, so we get this. And I messed that one up. So if we go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, and then when I'm getting to beat four, it should land. It should be again another situation where you're going to be landing the snare drum with the hi hat. Um, it's going to follow up with the paddle pattern. So we got a snare drum, snare, snare, and again use that loud, loud crack on beat four just to remind you brain like we're going to swap over in a sec so let's go through that's just five and six i'll try and play it slowly but it could get messy or sloppy that's probably the better word okay so here we go one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a without the hi-hat See the concentration. <laughs> all right, all right. Measures seven and eight. This one's also a tricky one because again, it's a three-note pattern. Um, we're going to play this one quite loud and proud, but you can, you know, you mess around with your own dynamics. You can sort of do this in a number of ways. It might be worth um, just getting your hi hat going and then just start playing around with snare kick, kick, snare kick, kick, snare kick, kick, snare kick, kick, snare kick, kick. But just sort of play around with dynamics. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna just go loud with this one because um, we've just done a whole lot of quiet dynamic stuff in measures uh, five and six. So with this one, we're gonna go into it just to keep the downbeat on beat one. So it's got a, you know, a nice flow, so it's not overly complicated. We're gonna start off and we're gonna sort of engage the pattern just with a, an initial right left. And then we're just gonna follow on with kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. So I'll count it out. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four. Now when we get to beat four, if you're playing it this way, your snare drum on that big crack line on beat beat four, we just can then follow up with a four e and a or call four e and a. We'll keep every note loud. So measures seven and eight. One e and a two e and a three e and a four. And then at that point there, I bet that was really loud for you guys. <laughs> when we go back, we're just back on our power needles again. Okay, so that's all the sticking that's going on. Um, if you want, you can just practice. If you want to get used to the sound of the kicks and snares, obviously just take your right hand off the hi-hat and you can start playing around with it on the, uh, the rim of the drum. Sounds quite nice. You can just tap your leg. Let's try this off the rim. Hopefully it will sound nice. I'm gonna turn this down because I've probably been deafening you and it's distorting. So here we go. So that's measure one and two, just proud it was inverted. Right, then we go into our threes. Okay, so we just do that little ender um, on beat four just to help us go into. And then at that point now, we can just seamlessly you know, transition back to the beginning of the sequence. All right, now. If you want to level things up, and this is the bit that I nicked off of Mr. Johnson, 
Now he was playing off his ride. And sort of primarily focusing on those groups of threes. Um, and that's the bit that I liked and I tried to get good at. And it's coming along, it's not there. If you want to make things a little bit meaner for yourself, um, just keep your right hand up on the hi-hat. Okay, because this makes you accountable for every step of the hi-hat. And uh, I'm about to make a fool of myself, so let's just go for the whole thing so you can hear what it's going to sound like. went better than I expected so well done me I'm being really cheesy today and I'm really sorry I don't know why I had a lot of coffee okay so that's that's pretty much everything what I would recommend doing is obviously you can play around with your own structure of this if this one's just quite a nice one because it keeps keeps you going and it's got these nice little changes which you've got to keep on top of um, you get a nice bit of play with the dynamics like bars five and six I tend to keep down quite low pop the odd snare and then when I get round to measure seven and eight ba do do ba do do ba do do ba almost like a sort of like rocky groove rather than sort of funk. But you could, like I said, start mixing in or playing around with the dynamics with that left hand. Okay, it's not changing the stick in, it's just the intensity at which you're going to whack that left hand. So you can have a lot of fun with that. Now, there's only one more thing to do and that is to pop up there and demonstrate it. I'll start off just by playing just like the, the, the original idea, which is eighth notes. So this is what I'd go at. It's probably, it's, it's at the top end of intermediate level, especially obviously it's gonna be dictated by the speed at which you play it, but it's a really good exercise. I remember when I first started out, I was doing a lot of the pounding, there's like kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, snare, um, moving my right hand to the ride cymbal and then replacing some of the double hits on the left and chucking those on the toms. I've done some videos on that in the past. You could probably do the same with inverted pounding, but I didn't think of doing that until now. So. That's another option. But yeah, playing around with keeping your right hand on that steady straight rhythm, one and two, and then sort of chucking these little groups of threes, you don't get a chance to really settle. With the powder doors, you know every time you're back to, you know, you've done like kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, it feels, you know, more natural to play. Um, but like with the threes, you're sort of tripping over yourself because your, your bass drum is not necessarily gonna land with your hi-hat, even though it feels like the start of a new pattern. Um, so that's where the challenge is. Um, and obviously you could just take that to the next level with the tss, 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 tss. If you want, you can play it without doing the um, You can just keep like with just a hi-hat glow. I could have just said that, but I felt, um, I don't know, I just wanted to play it for some reason. Calm down, Alex. Right, I'm gonna shut up, pop up there, play it, because I obviously need some decaf and a nap. All right, so <laughs> here we go. I'll pop up there, get it all done, slow, medium, fast, and uh, then I'll come and say goodbye.
All right, guys, so there it is. Hope you enjoyed that one. Give that one a go. If you want, just focus on the first two bars with eighth notes. If you want to just get work on your power diddles, did I say first two bars? I meant the first four bars. Just work on your power diddles and your inverted power diddles. Once you're comfortable with those, then maybe just isolate, you know, measures five and six. Get used to playing that because it will loop over and over again because, you know, every time you get to beat four, you've got that nice little power diddle pattern just to bring you back around to the beginning. And, you know, the same uh, idea applies for measures seven and eight. So I spent a lot of time just trying to get those down. And once you, like, you know, if you're more advanced than that, just dive straight into the and then try and get it all going. It's really fun. Um, it's, it's not something you're necessarily, you're not going to use this, but what it does is it just opens up doors so that if you are playing a gig where, you know, this, that sort of hi-hat pattern, that's, you know, and, and you can hear like a little syncopated rhythm popping out on like the bass of the guitar while you're trying to follow the vocals of, a, um, of your singer. You know, you're not going to be held back by the fact that you want your bass drums to land with your hi-hats. You can, you can start picking out these rhythms, you, you know, your right hand is going to be still clocking away and you can start coming up with these nice fun little interesting rhythms and it's not going to sort of stress you out when you're trying to do it on the fly so have some fun with that um, if you are interested i've got a website www.alexribchesterdrums.com there's a link down below um, and if you just want to give one month ago for five quid sign up and just head over to the exclusive sponsor library and um enjoy all the content that's there. If you're a beginner, I really highly recommend it because we've got a quick start guide and I've got some like progressive steps just to sort of get you through. And if you have any questions, um, leave a message on the message board, come find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram I'm trying to push as well. If you want to get uh, a little sneak peek of what we're going to do every week and every lesson that I post on the website, I'll do a little demonstration of, you know, just to let you guys know what you're missing out on. So uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. Give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more. And if you want to be notified every time any lesson comes out, hit that little bell icon and it will do just that. Until then, take care, keep drumming. And I'll see you very soon for some more fun free drumming ideas. All right, see you later. Bye.